As someone who has actual interest in music, I couldn't be more excited to welcome our next guest to the ring, writer, wrestling expert, and author of the new book, Ringmaster, Vince McMahon and the Unmaking of America. Please welcome Abraham Josephine Reesman. Hi, everybody. I can't see any of you, so I assume you're all beautiful. Congratulate think, yeah. yourselves for looking so nice. And on the inside. And on the inside. Well, that's, that's what's most important, yes. You all having a good time tonight? Great. Don't warm up my crowd. Sorry, I was just asking if they were... <laughs> okay. okay, okay. I'll butter them up, thank you very much. Okay. You okay. just assume they're ready. I'll you assume the... they're here waiting to be entertained. You're the funny one, I get it. <laughs> In your book, you describe the Republican Party's approach to reality as neo kayfabe. Mm. What do you mean by that? And uh, did I say it right? You said it so right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Neo kayfabe is a word I invented. Yes. I know. I decided that I was going to try that. Um, so kayfabe is not a word I invented. Kayfabe, uh, which is spelled K-A-Y-F-A-B-E, was a term of unclear linguistic origin that was used for about a century very much uh, as like a kind of an industry omerta within professional wrestling. Kayfabe was the code by which you said to the audience, hey, everything you're seeing here is real. We really hate each other, and that's why we're fighting. This is really a sporting competition. No one knows how it's going to end, and that guy's really Iranian. And in real life, you know, the guy's Italian. The guys, the two guys who were fighting are drinking buddies, and, of course, it was a predetermined act. So kayfabe used to re refer to, like, you know, you, you got to obey kayfabe. You know, don't let the audience find out who you really are. What we have now is this weird system that's m that's much more mind bending, where it used to be that there was just this big flat lie. It was what you're seeing in the ring is real, and a lot of people actually who were fans knew that it wasn't real. But you liked being able to participate in this pretty easy lie. You go, you cheer for the good guy, you boo against the bad guy. Eventually, Vince McMahon, who is the executive uh, chairman of World Wrestling Entertainment or WWE. When he took over his father's company, which was then called the World Wrestling Federation, or WWF, um, he killed kayfabe, uh, to put it bluntly. He wanted to get deregulated. This was his entry into politics, and now Vince is actually a pretty major political operative in the Republican Party. But his entree into that was he wanted to get deregulated, and part of that was he had to tell legislators and tell lawyers that wrestling was fake, which was something that would have been unthinkable to the previous generation. And you end up with this weird hybrid system, ultimately, where you're not telling the audience, hey, everything here is real. Believe everything. You're actually saying, hey, everything here is fake. Don't worry. It's all fake. But hey, guess what? I heard that the two guys who are fighting tonight, they really hate each other. And one of them might hurt the other guy. You better tune in because I don't know. It could be a real thing that you see here tonight. And that's the tout. That or you're watching and you're going like, oh, you're watching the match? Oh, no, no, no. I'm watching the match and decoding the match because I can know like, you know, the storylines behind the scenes of all these people. Anyway, you end up in politics with this system that looks a lot like that, where you have this mix of lies, truth and everything in between. And you deliver it with the same level of sincerity while also telling the audience, don't believe anything you hear except for the stuff you want to believe. You know, and it becomes this informational chaos, and it's really easy to manipulate people when you do that. Yeah, so I think it's a great analogy, and I want to unpack it a little bit. Thank so, you. Uh, so, and you're welcome. Oh, uh, I don't so, know why we're applauding, but thank you. Yes, thank you. So, uh, there's there's wrestling, and it's mm -hmm. in some sense a kind of play. Yes, but it's meant to look real, and it's not as sensational, right? They are they're in costume, and it's a mm -hmm. dance, and there's drama. But it isn't what I like. I grew up. Uh, I didn't enjoy wrestling, but it was on before American Gladiators, and they were hot <laughs> as hell. And so I would always catch a little bit of wrestling before you know Turbo and and his friends sure. showed up. No. Let's hear it okay. for American Gladiators, folks. Nothing. Sculpted bodies on display. There we go. But when I was a kid, this is after this is in the in the Vince McMahon era, you had these larger than life figures that, that right. the the ultimate warrior and the undertaker Hulk and Hogan, Hogan and, and that all of them. Well, yeah. right and and it became more and more of a just a, a true like melodrama. Totally. Uh, and the plausible deniability that all this was real started to fade away. Right, right. And so but but they want it so so at some point 
even though maybe before members of the audience knew, I don't think this is real, but could be. Yeah. The audience becomes participants in the live fully. They pretend it's real. The people on stage pretend it's real. The, the, the performers know, the audience knows, the audience knows, the performers know, but nobody ever calls that out. Mutually agreed upon lie. And that is, a, and, and that that's a, what it used to be. And in, and in your, and, 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 in, and in sort of your analogy, that's sort of what's become of the Republican Party. No, no, I think it's become the next stage. We already, we had for a long time the big, flat, easy lie of like democracy works, right? And I'm sorry, I'm sorry, but you had like an apartheid system in this country where a huge portion couldn't even vote. And we're talking about like, oh, we have democracy. But that it can be a useful lie. Like that can be inspiring, right? Everybody buys into the lie. And then maybe you advance society forward. What we have now is something much more cynical, much more cynical, where you're telling a, a political crowd, much as a wrestling audience might be told, you say, hey, Donald Trump, you know, as a Republican operative, you can like feed quotes and manipulate the public by saying, hey, don't believe anything he says. You know, don't believe anything he says, except for the stuff you want to believe, for the stuff that... We want you to believe, you know, we'll slip in these things where you're going to go, wait, that was real. That's the essence of QAnon is you go, OK, well, I know Donald Trump is usually just lying, but he said that weird sentence that time. And that sentence was actually a clue about stuff that he's really doing. And I can see behind the scenes. And that's when you kind of lose your mind. So we've gone from an overall kayfabe system to a Republican-dominated neo-kayfabe system, a Vince McMahon-style, everyone knows this is bullshit except the parts you want. Right, basically. So first of all, do you, how do you see, I don't know if there's an analogy in the wrestling world, but what's the most effective thing to do to break the spell yeah. of, a, of, a, of, a, of a drama like this? Right, I mean, the... I wish I had an easy answer. If I did, I would be running for office right now because I think that that would be the solution <laughs> to a lot of the problems we're in. The best thing I have to offer is as is radical honesty. Like I I wrote this book, Ringmaster, with the intention of taking a topic that is usually analyzed either through the lens of kayfabe by the wrestling journalism world or with this sort of disdain and lack of curiosity by the mainstream. What I tried to do, and I don't know if this will actually fix wrestling or anything, is just say, well, the best way to combat this blizzard of lies is to just, as hard as I can, hold on to documentation, credible interviews, and just gut instinct about what's real, as opposed to just trying to fit things to the master narrative that already exists. And, oh, thank you. So um, I, I tried really hard on that, but I don't, I feel like in politics, that is still, it's not, it's not the, the easiest strategy, but just being, you know, this is something you think about with the Democrats all the time, where you want them to just say what they believe, because there's all of this sort of massaging of going like, well, if we phrase it this way, then people won't be as on board with it. And you just want someone to say like, you know, for example, trans kids deserve to be protected in this country, you know? Like, if you just say something like that openly, all of a sudden you're like, I mean, what you see that happen with, like, state legislators and they go viral, but the people at the top are too worried about their own neo kayfabe because the Republicans are the worst offenders here, but the Democrats also. You have plenty of times where they're just saying one thing, meaning another, and then having a whole wide range of, you know, things in between the truth and the fiction that they're feeding into the media, and it just becomes this confusing blizzard. I keep saying blizzard, don't I? Am I have I said blizzard more than one time? Now you have, for now sure. Now I have, okay. I guess now I have. That's well, true, it's yeah. interesting. The thing that I, I think, I think finding out how to untangle all this is obviously very difficult. If it was a problem we knew how to solve, we would solve it. But where I start from is I actually think as an analogy where it's really useful is it helps put, it helps put an analogy to help understand why walking into a Trump rally and being like, none of this is real, is right. it, it working? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And it is and it is something about kind of, it does tie it into what makes this a kind of fascistic movement mm -hmm. in the sense that it is both naive and cynical at the same time. Totally. That it is naive and that they believe this man is their avatar. It is cynical and that they know when he is lying and they don't care because they're in on the joke. A hundred percent. And it gives you, I think, a place to not go where there's, where we're trying to, yes. where that, that spell ding, ding, ding. can't be broken 
uh, by just by just using the truth. And it does argue for what we need in a larger sense is our own story, one we believe, one that isn't yes, a, one a that isn't rooted in lie. We need yes, a bigger yes. story. Basically, we need we need someone with the power to go into that ring with a story as compelling as the one that Absolutely. Offer. And like the thing is kayfabe is sort of a fact of life. In fact, kayfabe is kind of good when it's chosen well. Kayfabe is is a tool. Kayfabe is not a, it doesn't have a moral valence in and of itself. Religion is a kind of kayfabe. You know, hey, believe, get the fuck out of here. I'm sorry. You get no, the fuck off No, but the point is like right, kayfabe stage. is not just saying fiction. Kayfabe is not a synonym for fiction. It's a mix of fact and fiction, especially neo kayfabe that's existing in this weird tension that can be very compelling. And yeah, I do agree with you. I think the real problem that we can at least try to mitigate, I don't have the proactive solution, is just when you have somebody like Vince McMahon or Donald Trump who have the, this, this uncanny ability to go up and just in public say, hey, I'm a schmuck and I'm a liar. And then when you say, hey, you see, that guy's a schmuck and a liar. You know, it, the way society is currently structured, or maybe it's our brains, we just go, okay, but he already said he was. And then you don't do anything. You, and I don't know why the human brain does that. I don't know why our socialization does that. But it's this total neutralizing factor. If you lack shame and if you lack uh, a revulsion to lying, you can just say I'm terrible and I'm a liar and then just get away with it. I wish that I knew the best silver bullet for that, but I know it's not a fact check. I know it's not accusing someone of being a hypocrite or a bad person because if they've already owned up to that, which virtually every Republican politician has on some level just by endorsing Trump on some level, you you end up with this world where like, what are you going to come up to a Republican and say, hey, you know, you're a transphobe or you're a misogynist. It's like, what, what are they going to, like that's going to do anything to them. Yeah, I do think it's, um, I, I think for a long time, ugh, politics, it's become like wrestling is a pejorative. And, and I do actually agree it is. Yeah. Uh, for the ways that you're describing, but then I think it's worth taking a moment to say, okay, let's say it is. It's beautiful because well, well, wrestling can be beautiful. Yeah. Yes, sure. When the stakes are lower, uh, but the <laughs> true. <laughs> but no, but I think it. I, I I do find it to be a really helpful analogy. Uh, you kind of let the let the uncomfort the, di the discomfort of what politics has become. Uh, you let that you let that wash over you, mm -hmm. and then when that's done, you can start thinking. All right, like. What's our what's our what's the story we're telling? I agree. I think the more you understand pro wrestling, for for better or worse, these are the sets of archetypes that work now. And I I wish I saw more politicians on the left, on the progressive left, who are willing to just get up and say you'll be like a Eugene Debs kayfabe and just go you know let's believe in the human spirit. Like, let's have that be our kayfabe, that we think people are actually fundamentally good, because you don't really have either party saying that right now. You know, let's have a belief well, in civic... In, I just don't see I think a lot of hope. Well, what's interesting... I see, I think what's interesting there is you can make an argument that, the, that we were so critical of Joe Biden in the campaign because he had a kayfabe, and his mm. was, I believe that we can bring this country together and that uh, that we can build, we can bring people together from both sides, that America's fundamentally good, that even Republicans are fundamentally good, and I can work with them and talk to them, and Mitch McConnell's my friend, and I can stand on a bridge and get the funding, and I can, <laughs> and I can call this guy, and I can do that guy, and we can go back to that kind of thing. And, and what's interesting yeah. about that is that is a story that isn't a lie. It's obviously not true, but you can take right. the parts that you believe— yeah, and, and latch and on do to it. Them. I know. Uh, so yeah, anyway, true. I think, but so I think it's instructive too about the kinds of candidates that have done well on the Democratic yeah. side: Barack Obama, Joe Biden, Bernie yeah. Sanders, being the three big most signal sure, examples you, but you, that you, each tell their version of a story that you can decide is as true as you want it to be. Mm. So it's a dangerous about? road. It's a dangerous road. But you—that's I think the real art of politics these days is figuring out how to pepper in truth and lies in a way that are, well, it's going to compel people. And the more truth you have, the better, I think. I'm going to die. I, I was, mine was 30% less cynical than yours, but I'm with you. But I'm with no, you. No, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I wish I had the exact political program to propose for everybody, but I do think we need to stop thinking about our, our – we need to stop doing the tactics we've been doing because they're – overall, I think we're, we're, we're on a downward trend. So – I, I'm not to be not to be grim. I just I, I'm trans and I see what's happening with the anti-trans panic right now. And it just scares the crap out of me. So 
I apologize for not being as cheery and uplifting as maybe I would have been at some other period. We have to figure out our pile driver, you know? I know. Sorry. I know. This is supposed to be a funny podcast. Let's, I'll, I'll try and spice it up. I apologize. Um, hey, we, we indicted Trump today. See that? Hey, we indicted Trump. Isn't that great? Well, I didn't do it. I didn't do anything. Hey, I shouldn't hey, take any yes, credit. Hey, hey, yes, you did. Did yes, I? Yes, you did. You participated in the protecting in the process. Of the, you were part right. of it. I paid we my all, taxes. You That's paid true. your taxes. I did pay my taxes. Have you ever been to New York? I lived there for 12 years. Do you ever, buy a, you buy, you ever uh, pay sales tax on anything? Uh, sure. So well, there you go. go. There we go. Thank you. Thank you. Now it's time for a game we're calling Wrestling with America. I'm going to ask you a question, and you will let us know who did it. A professional wrestler. <laughs> A professional wrestler or an American politician? I also threw oh in a couple of other questions because just like Donald Trump, I don't play by the rules. <laughs> I will be president one day, and I have thrown a ketchup-covered plate at the wall at Crooked. I'm just kidding. I don't want to be president. <laughs> I'll stay out of that. All right, Josie, you ready to play? Uh, as ready as I'm going to be. Pro wrestler or American politician, who threw a Gucci shoe after tearing up after tearing up $3,000 $3, worth of $100 bills, a wrestler or an American politician? Oh, I'm going to guess a politician? It was WWE's Ric uh, Flair in oh, 1998. Sorry. Ric sorry. Flair, I remember I'm, Ric Flair. I know Ric Flair. I just, I, 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 I messed that up. Sorry. Who's <laughs> sorry, this is like the nightmare is that you're going to get quizzed on your own book topic. Wait, hold on. But wait, but wait. Yeah. Who threw a Gucci shoe after tearing up $3,000 worth of $100 bills? A wrestler or an American politician? Oh, well, obviously a wrestler. Who do you think it was? I think it was probably the Nature Boy Ric Flair. You got it. God bless you. Who successfully dodged two brown Oxfords thrown during a press conference? Two? Well, I assume it was George Bush. You right? got it. Yeah, right. Yeah. Who held dominion over the temple using the power of the earthquake demon Mil Muertes? <laughs> Drawing a blank on the name, but that's a wrestler. Yeah, it was WWE's Katrina, right. who also wrestled under the name Maxine. That's right. Who had to publicly deny being a witch after admitting to visiting a bloodstained satanic <laughs> temple? That'd be a politician. It was. It, yeah. No, I can't remember. No, it, don't give me the ding yet. I didn't get it right. You did. No, that's all you have to do. <laughs> oh, that was all I had to. Okay, great. Well, I guess I'm I brought the host, that on Malcolm. Thank you. It was Republican candidate Christine O'Donnell in 2010. Right, right Christine O'Donnell. Uh, Sorry, she said in a Bill a Maher clip from 1999, one of my first dates with a witch was on a satanic altar, and I didn't know it. I mean, there's a little blood there and stuff like that. We went to a movie and then had a midnight picnic on a satanic altar. One of my first dates with a witch was on a satanic altar, and I didn't know it. And I mean, there's a little blood Wait, there you, and stuff like that. That was a date? date? Your first date was yeah, a satanic altar? Yeah, yeah, we went altar? to a movie and then like, had a little midnight picnic Let's on a satanic altar. a movie altar. and a sacrifice? <laughs> Wasn't she the one who then had to do the ad that just begins with her looking at the screen? She says, I'm not a witch. Yeah. That, that was, was a, a great moment. Well, by the way, that's a great example of a reversal. Yeah. She, she, nobody thought she was a witch. No, but she, <laughs> she should have just, she should have She should have just leaned in and said, I am a witch. That would have been great. Yeah. Yes. Who once rigged $100 bills to fall from the ceiling onto a screaming crowd, at least some of which were real? Was it a wrestler or a politician? Was that Vince McMahon? It's a trick question. It was both. It was oh. Donald Trump, and it was also this during a 2007 episode of Monday Night Raw. What? Look up at the ceiling, Vince. That's Look not up real right money, now. folks. Look at that. Money, money. Real money. Grab some, grab some. Donald Trump, you embarrass me like this? Yeah, Hell Trump yeah. did that. I assumed Vince did it at some other point. I haven't seen every single episode. Jesus, there's a lot of programming, so apologies. If someone were to proudly reveal they ordered 100 cans of Campbell's Chunky Soup, would it be a WWE wrestler or an American politician? Oh, man, American politician, I think. Yep, it was Ted Cruz. That's right, right, yeah. Who is almost responsible for the ritual sacrifice of an innocent woman? I mean, a lot of people, right? <laughs> That's a good point. I, I guess I'm going to say The Undertaker. You got it. It was yeah, The Undertaker. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It was a fictional storyline involving Stephanie McMahon. Oh, yeah. Uh, Read my book. It ends with that, basically, that whole storyline. It's very interesting. Which one of these is not an honestly phenomenal pro wrestling style nickname Donald Trump gave a rival or nemesis? Mm. A, Puppet Jones. B, Disaster from Alaska. C, Fat Jerry. Or D, Broccoli Boy. Wow. Oh, man. Can you see those four again? Because they were really good. Puppet Jones. Puppet Jones. Disaster from Alaska. 
I think disaster G- from Alaska didn't happen. Did that it? did happen. It, it was did. Lisa Murkowski. It was actually Broccoli Boy. It was the one we made up. Puppet Jones really? was Doug Jones. It sounds, that was the one where I was like, I'm sure somebody said Broccoli Boy, right? He's and he called Jerry Nadler Fat Jerry. Fat Jerry. Which that's is that's, really, that's, that's a lame. first idea. That's a first yeah, idea. That's, you, you run that one out of the room. Who pretended to have sex with a mannequin in a coffin? Oh yeah, yeah. That would be Hunter Hearst Helmsley, Paul Levesque. Triple H? Triple H! Yeah, sorry. There, he has a lot of names. He has a lot that, of that names. Was, that was all the same person. I was not guessing over and over again. Which of, these is, which of these is a wrestler's stage name and not the moniker of a politician? Oh. Carlos Danger, Pierre Delecto, yeah. Dusty Rhodes, or Lou Alcindor? Sorry, I'm guessing which one is a wrestler, right? Yes, which yeah, one is Dusty a wrestler? Rhodes, yeah. Dusty Rhodes is a wrestler. Carlos Danger was Anthony Weiner's oh, online remember. name. Pierre Delecto was Mitt Romney's hilarious alter well. ego. And Lou Alcindor was Eric Holder's email moniker. That's right. Which is also Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's birth name. That, is, that, was, that was this one I was doing, but yeah. Oh. I was doing the woo. No, I don't. Swish. I don't know there that. There you go. I, you knew, so that's cool. I didn't know you were doing a sports thing. I don't know. I wrote a book, but I don't actually know anything about sports. I came, I came to wrestling from musical theater, not from football and wrestling. Nice. But that's right. That's it. That makes sense. That no, tracks. it does. I'm telling you, those are like the tracks. And you talk to all the queer and trans wrestling fans, of which there are many, and many of them will tell you, yeah, I was really, I thought that like the musical theater elements of that were the most exciting thing. You love the elocution. And that's when somebody uh, uh, touches a wire. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and finally, Death match. and finally, which of these is not a real life Donald Trump pro wrestling moment? A. Donald Trump clotheslines Vince McMahon and shaves McMahon's head in the ring. Yeah, that happened. No. B. Donald Trump appears on screen alongside the Boogeyman, a wrestler who ate worms. C. Donald Trump takes a Stone Cold Stunner from Stone Cold Steve Austin. Or D. Donald Trump is sealed in a coffin and buried in a grave by The Undertaker. Oh, I wish that last one had happened. That would have been really interesting, but it didn't happen. It didn't happen. No, no, no. Uh, the buried alive match. Wow. Maybe they should settle the trial that way. <laughs> Whoever can get somebody into the coffin, close it, and bury it. Nothing would bring me greater joy than, than for this one case going back to, let's see if he fucking floats. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Bless you, John. Thank you. Uh, Abraham Josephine Reisman. Yes. What's the, what's the book called? It's called Ringmaster, Vince McMahon, and the Unmaking of America. It's with Atria Books. You can go to abrahamreisman.com or ringmasterthebook.com. Woo! All right. Thank you. That was great. That was really great.